Today we're going to see Windows Domain Based Attack. In this we're going to see LLM and RNET BIOS poisoning to capture the domain user credential. By using those credentials we're going to perform NTLM relay attack to get the access into other system. So before we move on with the practical let us get a brief idea about these attack type. Locally, multicast name resolution and NetBIOS name services are the two name services used by Windows for resolving host name to IP address when DNS request fails in a network. In other words, it is used to identify a host name when the DNS doesn't work. Let us understand it with the following diagram. Here we have a Windows server which is running Active Directory and acting as a domain controller and managing a domain like universe.corp. Under this domain, we have multiple systems. Here we have a system 1 with a host name Mars, system 2 with a host name Jupiter, system 3 with a host name Discovery, system 3 also having a shared folder which is called as files. Now let's say the system 2 want to access this as files. It will send a DNS request to Windows Server because Windows Server is running a DNS server. Now in this request, if the user mistype the host name or type a wrong host name, then DNS will not respond. In that case, the system 2 will send the broadcast request to all the system in a domain. Now this broadcast request is called as LLMNR in a newer system and NetBIOS names always in an older system. Now let us see LLMNR poisoning attack. Here we have the attacker system in a network who will perform the LMR poisoning attack by using a tool like Responder and listen for the broadcast request. Once the attacker receives the broadcast request, it will respond to the system 2 and ask for the domain user credential. System 2 will respond with the domain username and password hash. Now the attacker can crack this hash by using a tool like John or Hashcat and perform other attacks. Now let us see how the attacker can use this credential to perform the NTLM relay attack. NTLM relay attack is a technique to rewrite the captured NTLM hash to a target system which is having the same domain account. Let us understand it with the following diagram. So here we have all the system in a domain and the attacker system is running responder to receive the user credential. Once the attacker receives the domain user credential, it will redirect those user credentials to the target system by using tool like NTLM relay X and execute any command or create a reverse shell. Now let us see the practical. For the lab setup we are using VMware. In this we are going to set up Windows domain environment. Here we are using Windows Server 2019. We have given this computer a name. You can change the name from here. Go to local server and from here you can change the name. So we have given the name Cosmos. Now we are going to install Active Directory. For this, go to Add Roles and Features. Just click on Next. Select the role based and feature. Next. And here we can select our system that is Cosmos. Then Next. Here we select the Active Directory domain services. Add features and then click on next. Next and next. Now we can install it. Once it is done, we can close it. Now you can see here notification. We click on the notification. We have the option here promote this server to a domain controller. We click on it and here it asks to add a domain. Now we go to this. We don't have any domain here. So we create a new domain that is a root domain. So we go to this add a new forest and here you can give it a name. So let me just give it a name universe.corp. Next. Now in this window, if we have to give the password for directory service restore, so we can give it any password here. Then click on next. Here it will automatically select the universe as a NetBIOS domain name. Now click on next, next, next. Now we just click on install. Now once it is done, you will be signed out and we have to log in again. Now here we can see that the administrator local user account is promoted as a domain user account. Now we log in with the same password. Now this password is same as the password that you are using before as ad for the administrator. So we have installed the Active Directory, promoted it as a domain controller and created a domain. Now we need to add some Windows system to this domain. For adding those system, we need some user account that is domain user account. So for that, go to tools, active directory users and computer. And here we have our domain universe.corp. Under that we have users option. So here we have some users. Here we have the administrator user. Now in this, we're going to create some other domain users. So right click on it go to new user and we give some name here so let me just give a name cyclops and for the login name also you'll use the same then click next here we can give some password and deselect this option 
now click on next finish so the user is created same way we can create some other user so here i have created the other user that is magneto so now we have created two users cyclops and magneto now we can go on adding system to this domain so we will be using this windows 10 so let's start this system before we add this system to our domain we need to point the dns to a domain controller Now here we can change the DNS setting and point it to the Windows Server. Now click OK. Now we can type here domain. So from here we can rename our PC. So we have changed our host name as Jupyter. And here we have option join a domain. Now here we give our domain name. That is universe.corp. Now we use a domain user that is Cyclops. Now click on OK. Now we need to restart the system. Now the system is added to the domain. Same way we can add other system to the domain. Here we have system 2 which we have added to the domain by using a domain user Magneto. Here we can see the host name is Discovery and it is a part of domain universe. In this system, we have also created a shared folder with the name shared files. And here we can see that the user who have the permission to access this shared folder. We have given the permission to Cyclops to access this folder. Here X-Men is the local user in this system. So this is all we have to do to set up our lab. Now let us see how we will do the attack. For that, we will go to Kali. So this is our Kali system. Let us perform the LLMNR poisoning attack. To do that, we are going to use a tool called Responder. Here we will give the default interface and we will start in a verbose mode. Now we can see that it start listening for the broadcast. Now let's say this user tried to access a shared folder in the other system. So here user types the host name. Let's say the user mistyped the host name and write something like this. Now, if the user go to this, let's go back to Kali. And here we can see that. Now we can stop it. Here we can see that we have captured the hash. So this is the NTLM hash for the user Cyclops. So let us copy this. To crack it. Now we save it. Now we save this hash in a file. Now after saving this, we can crack it by using hashcat tool. To use the hashcat, we will use the command hashcat. Now here we have used the mode option 5600 that is for the NTLM hash. And this is the file where we have stored the hash. This is the word list file. And this is the output file in which the password will be saved and force is used to ignore any warning. Now it is done. Let us see the file. Now here we can see that this is our hash and at the end we can see this is the password. Now let us see the NTLM relay attack. To perform the NTLM relay attack, first we have to make some changes in the responder configuration file. So let us locate the config file 
now you open this file in this we have to change this SMB service we have to make it off and as well as HTTP because we're going to use a tool called NTLM RelayX and that tool is going to use the SMB and HTTP so we have to keep those these two off now we save it for responder we will use the same command now along with the responder we have to run the NTLM RelayX tool so for that we can use the command in packet NTLM RelayX in this we are going to give the IP of second system which is having a shared folder and running SMB service now hyphen e is for executing a command or a file so let us create a payload file that we can execute on the target for this we are going to use msfenum so here we have used the payload windows meter printer L host is the attacker IP and we have opened a port 4242 and created output file as get shell.exe so we can see here our payload is created now we can give this file in here so before we run this let us start a listener so that we can listen for the connection that will be created from the target system for this we will use metasploit framework now in this we are going to use multi handler for creating a listener so here we have given the same setting as we have given in the MSF Venom now before we run the listener let us run our so our responder is listening now let us start this also now our NTLM relax tool is also started now let me just run the listener now our multi handle is running so let's say this user try to access the share in the other system now when we go to this share let's go back to Kali now here we can see that we have got the meter repeater session now we can see that discovery windows 10 so we got the access into the target system that's all for today see you next time